Hello, hi everyone. Today in this video, we're going to see about uh, the basics of combinational logic uh, gates, how to code by using system very large. Um, this video will describe about um, the basic logic gates and how to code the design, um, the system very large code for designing the logic gates and the test bench um, and also describe about the, about the EDA uh, playground tool which I use for simulating this and I'll show the output in the EDA playground tool as well, right? That's the introduction about this video. Let me jump into the content. Okay, so what are the seven logic gates uh, which we already know about AND, R, NAND, NAR, NOT gate, this inversion and exclusive R, exclusive NAR. Um, so this is the basic uh, building blocks of any uh, circuit logic design that we can do which will use all these basic gates and the truth table has been descri described here. Um, let me go into the uh, coding part directly rather than the spending time over here. Um, the tool, what is the required tool has been used. Uh, gen generally, um, there are ma many tools available so which require a proper license. EDAplayground.com, so you can go to this as long as it's, it's a license free tool available to code and run the simulation. Um, you can choose Aldec Rivera Pro as a, a tool which would uh, which would enable you to run the uh, simulation and see the output. Uh, you can run with the email ID. This doesn't require any additional validation or you know providing additional details about your uh, university or company anything like that. So you can anybody can go and use with the email ID and then run, the, run your simulation and see. So these are the settings what I used. I just had it here um, in case if you're using the EDA playground uh, um, tool, please use these settings for you to um, run your simulation. Okay, let's let me jump into the basics of uh, similar log coding, right? So how to code it if you see that first you need to define a module. The module is uh, module defines a set of inputs and output ports um, and inside the module we will be declaring the input and output of the logic circuits, right? That's where the number of what are the ports are the pins are um, uh, the input and output of that particular uh, top level module which we are defining here. The second part is um, the input and output that means the the ports has to be defined has to be declared the port declaration is what we are uh, taking care um, in the next step that's the input and output the input is defined as a logic a and b output is defined as a register that is you know all the output ports has been defined over here um, i used always uh, block here so always block is a powerful tool for modeling the circuit within system very log um, it can be used for the combination logic as well as for the sequential logic. Um, so I use the uh, uh, always uh, uh, block here with A R B. That's, that means any time the two inputs A R B changes, then all these codes would get triggered. That's the meaning of uh, A R B. So inside the always block, since there is many uh, lines of code, you have to always use the begin and end. Um, that is, uh, you know, the begin and end is um, uh, used inside the always block. Um, so every module which was started also has an end module so which has to be defined so module end module the input and output ports has to be declared um, and I use always always uh, block here uh, inside the always block I have defined the the combination logic gates um, so I use simple assign statement here assign R is equal to A R B and uh, and is equal to A and B inversion is inversion of A, uh, NAND is uh, um, A and B, inversion of it, NAR is A R B, inversion of it, exclusive R is uh, inversion of A and B plus A and um, B bar, right, A bar B plus A B bar, uh, exclusive NAR is A bar B plus A B. So I use that described for the exclusive R and exclusive NAR. I use display statements more here because uh, it, it helps us to know whether when you execute the code, it will help us to figure out does this particular part of the logic is particular part of the line is getting executed or not. Right? That's why display is used. Um, so yeah, I would like to specify the operators used. The operators were used in this uh, coding is the, you know, the logic operators. It's called logic operator. Uh, A and B is the logical and. A, R, B is the logical R, inversion is the logical not. That's the system very log terms to be defined. Um, now, you know, we have gone through this uh, description in the previous slide itself. Let me jump into the EDA tool. 
Okay, so this is the EDA playground tool, um, which I mentioned in the slides already. The EDA playground.com is a link where you can type and uh, search in the Google and open this one. In the uh, left hand side, there are settings that are available. You can choose system where log or very log. Um, UVM, OVM, I'm declared as a none. Um, Altec Rivera Pro tool is the one used here, which doesn't require any additional uh, uh, validation of your uh, email ID and uh, etc. And then once these settings are done, we can start coding um, in this one. So first one is the design module, design.sv file. In the left hand side, testbench.sv file is present. So you can type your code here for the design and this is the code for your test bench. So uh, this code is exactly same what I defined in the um, slides. So the module gate is defined with the input A and B. Um, and it also has the outputs, which is R gate and NAND, NAR, inverter, exclusive R, exclusive NAR. Now coming to the test bench, TB underscore gates is the test bench, which is defined, um, which has all the verification components placed inside that. Once the test bench is defined, the module is defined, we have to declare the variable. The variable that is used to connect the test bench to the design, design module. So that um, variable declaration is happening here with the input and output and all the um, A and B is the input, um, R and NAND, NAR, inverter, XR, XNAR is the output. Now, how do we uh, stitch together the test bench and the design, right? We have to instantiate the design module inside the test bench. That's where gates is the design module what has been used and that design module has been instantiated over here. And then um, uh, these are the connections which is happening between the test bench and the uh, design module. Okay, once the test bench is defined, ports are declared, instantiated the design module inside that. Next is a stimulus. So stimulus, uh, I, I use simple initial begin and uh, uh, begin and end, and then inside that I'm giving the different values of A and B. So what is the value of A, B? The initializing with a zero, and then after 10 nanosecond I change it to A to one. Uh, I gave some uh, propagation delay or wire delay uh, as a two nanosecond because with respect to this simulator we need this delay to get the uh, exact of this inputs to be propagated to the output otherwise I see some glitch and outputs are not um, as expected values so I use the two nanosecond as a propagation delay um, for all these modules whenever I give a new stimulus a is one um, and then providing the display statement of uh, knowing the output with A and B given value, what is the expected output? Then after uh, 10 nanosecond, I'm changing the value of B to one with the two nanosecond wire delay. Then after 20 uh, nanosecond, again, A is changed to zero. After 20 nanosecond, B is changed to zero. After 40 nanosecond, A is changed to zero. After 40 nanosecond, B is changed to one. After 100 nanosecond, A is changed to one. Just to simplify, I made this a simple, uh, you know, delay based uh, stimulus, not like randomizing everything. Those we can see in the following uh, videos. Now, um, with this stimulus given, um, let's run the simulation and see how the results looks like. I'm just clicking the run. Okay, let's look at a couple of sample outputs. Uh, now I have the results run is complete, results are available. Uh, when A is equal to one and B is equal to one, um, the R gate output is equal to one, AND is equal to one, NAND is inversion of AND, zero, NAR is inversion of R, zero, um, inversion of A is zero, XR when both the inputs are one, XR is equal to zero, when both the inputs are one, X NAR is equal to one. So it is expected output. We'll, we'll, we'll do one more sample output. Okay, when A is equal to zero, B is equal to one, what is the expected output? When A is equal to zero, um, R is one, AND is zero, NAND is one, NAR is zero, inversion of A is one, XR when zero and one is one, XNAR when zero and one is zero. So it's also expected output. Let's try one more combination. When A is equal to zero, B is equal to zero, R output is zero, AND is zero, NAND is one, NAR is one, inversion of R, Inversion of A is 1, XR is 0, and XNR is 1. So this output looks uh, expected. I'll paste this link in the comment box in case if you want to refer this code, you can use this link to refer this code. Thank you.